Welcome to Rep Your Brand. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rep Your Brand, a podcast for B2B marketers who are looking to build their careers through a strong personal brand. I'm Nick Bennett. This podcast is brought to you by my friends at Motion. They're a done-for-you podcasting service for scrappy marketing teams in B2B tech. The two of the nicest guys around, the work that they do is truly world-class. You can find them at motionagency.io. And today, our guest is someone that I've followed for a long time, Kyle Lacey, marketing leader at Seismic, and someone that is a must-follow on LinkedIn. Kyle, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. That was quite the intro. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I like to kind of frame these episodes with like a big idea. And so marketers are starting to understand how a personal brand plays into their role within a company. But a personal brand isn't just about your current role. And I know you've talked about this. A personal brand is about your career. So marketers need to start thinking about how to build a body of work that includes various layers to kind of help them accelerate their career in the long term. So Kyle, everyone knows who you are. I, we don't need to do an introduction or anything. First off, you know, also congrats on the seismic acquisition. Super exciting. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, you posted recently that personal branding equals thinking about your career and not your current job. Let's let's kind of dive into that a little bit. When did you come to that realization? Uh, I think it was when I realized how important community is to your personal brand and your career. Uh, I think a lot of times people, for good reason, get heads down on a job and they don't look up and say, oh, there's this community of peers and people that will be important to my career. And they only focus on what they're doing on a day to day basis. That doesn't mean you don't ignore your job because you need to be you need to actually excel and deliver on the role you're being hired for. But there's too many times where people will leave a company and they don't know what to do or they won't they won't have the next best thing offered to them because they haven't spent the time uh, understanding how to build a community and also networking, which is a terrible word, but it's it's really about building community. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with you. And so when do you kind of think, you know, or recommend that marketing professionals, especially probably early in their career, start thinking about their career versus just being head down and doing a good job to get that initial experience? I think when you're first starting out, it should be the 80-20 rule, like it applies to everything, right? 80% should be focused on delivering what you do best because you're learning, right? We're all learning. We're learning every day. But 20% of your time should be spent meeting other peers and mentors. Because if you meet other peers, you get better at your job because you're learning more about what you do, right? And, and if you're talking to people who've already done it, you're expanding your knowledge base there as well. So I don't, I don't, I mean, for me, I, I've been in, you know, I've been in leadership roles for a while now. I still follow the 80-20 rule. Yeah, totally agree with you. I mean, I actually, I still follow it. I mean, I'm not... I've only been working for about like 10 years professionally now, but I still, you know, every single day, I kind of follow that same path as well. And so, you know, as a marketing leader and someone that's held various leadership positions, how do you recommend that your team starts thinking about their own like personal brands? The, I, 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 I just use a one liner with them. I, yeah. If they, if they have to, if they leave my team and they have to use their resume to get a job, then I didn't do it correctly. Yeah. I don't, you shouldn't have to use your resume to get a job if you've done this the right way. So uh, that's where we start. It's like, go, like, let's be tactical for a second, Nick. It's like, go spend one meeting a week, 30 to 45 minutes meeting somebody outside the company. One time a week. That's 45 minutes. If you can't find 45 minutes in your day, you're not being productive. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, so true too. But so I, I think... I want to kind of go back into that because I feel like some C-levels get terrified that their employee brands will grow, which honestly, when, when they're working for the employer, it's great. It's a win-win. But what happens like, you know, these C-levels get terrified because these people leave. And so what's your take on employees that build their brands within the company, do an amazing job, drive inbound because of the brand play, but then leave? Like, are you, does that bother you at all? No. I, I think people that are terrified of that aren't uh, uh, aren't secure in their leadership ability to begin with. I, we uh, This world is too small. High growth software is too small. Y'all are going to work together again in the future, probably. Everybody buys everybody else. Everybody's raising money. 
Uh, it is, it is a mindset. It is a minuscule mindset that I just don't, I don't understand. Honestly, I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah for sure. I definitely agree with you. And so let's, let's go down the, the podcast path. Cause you ran your own podcast for a while. How were you able to manage the, that personal passion project with your CMO duties? Very carefully. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's time management, honestly. I mean, that's, and, and for, for me, I wish that I could continue revenue diaries, but for right now I've had to put it on hold over the past. I think it's been a while since I've recorded the last one um, because there's, there's other priorities that are presenting themselves that are more important than that podcast at the moment. But if, if you have a passion project that you want to do, you will make time for it because you're not, you're, you're being, you're managing your time productively. I mean, there's two, there's two things people should think about time, learning how to manage time productively and appropriately and getting enough sleep. I mean, that's probably the two, that's it. Like there's not, there's not even like a, um, if you can figure those two things out, you're going to win. As long as you're not just as long as you're not crazy. I mean, that's 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 the reality. So for me, it's time management. It's prioritization. It's not saying yes to everything. It's doing the things that are the top 10 that you need to get done during the day. All that stuff matters and it allows you to have some amount of bandwidth to do things that are interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And so it's. It's tough because so I, I run I run two shows. I have this one and then I have one around ABM as well. And so, you know, how do you, I guess, support or encourage your team members to take on personal projects that they find passion in? I I make sure that they understand. I give them clarity around the fact that I believe in it, that I support it. I think a lot of times leaders and even individual contributors, they, they aren't clear with their, with their, um, with their time. Right. So for me, it's, I sit people down and say, if you have this idea, I fully support it. I just need you to make sure that, you know, we're talking about your day to day OKRs that you need to hit, but also let's talk about this passion project. Um, because it means something. I mean, there's a reason why, uh, there, people have side hustles and I think it makes them better at their job as long as they put their job first, because there's a responsibility there that matters. I think sometimes people get too involved in their side hustle and their job falls off yeah. and they don't make the decision to go do their side hustle full time. That is the wrong way to approach it. You need to be secure in your ability to make the decision when it was, when it's time to move on to the next thing. Yeah, that's it's it's so true. And so I've, I've had a lot of people ask me recently. So I'm interested in your take on this is how do you handle an employee who may appear to be more focused on their own brand versus their role at, at the company? Are they hitting their goals? Yeah, that's that's, that's it. One. Yeah. If they are great. If they're not, probably should reevaluate it. Yeah. The, the issue is that is that the most most of the time, if somebody's worried about that, they're not setting the correct goals or even managing the goals with their employee. Right. Yep. That's it. Yeah. No, that's totally agree with you there. It's 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 basically yeah. I mean, there's there's people that I think definitely if you if you can do your job, hit your goals, and then still have these side hustles or fun things that you do on the side, and like hey, if you can fit it in, it goes back to time management. There's a great, I got a great example. I have a great example. There's a guy and when he joined, he was very clear with us. He said, I'm still playing college baseball. He was just, he had just graduated. Um, and he laid out exactly his schedule and me, my take was, I don't, I do not care as long as you hit your goals. The guy hits his goals every month and plays college baseball. Like then, then who am I, you know, I great. Keep doing it. Exactly. So, well, I mean, that's, that, that's a really good example. And I just wish, I wish there were more leaders that kind of had that same mentality as well, because, you know, sometimes, especially as you get into enterprise companies or something, sometimes not everyone has that same mentality as you, um, even if you do lay it out and hit your goals. So, you know, kudos to you for that, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of it is um, that the mentality, well, I think you said it, the mentality is different. And, you know, when you've been at a company for 20 years, it's a different mentality. 
Yeah. Um, but guess what? As long as they're not there their entire lives, they're going to leave that company too, and they're going to put their head up, and they're going to realize they don't have the community to support it, to support what they need to do now. That's totally agree with you. And so actually, you know, let's go into community because just like you, I'm also really big into community, passionate about it. And so, you know, I know you're a huge, you know, advocate for Pavilion, which was Revenue Collective. What, and I'm a member as well. Why do you feel community is so important and how can that help you level yourself up as a marketer? Um, I, it's twofold. One is, uh, one is that you, you meet peers and they help you evolve in your brand and as well as your job. Like when I joined, um, Pavilion as an example, I was the first time VP of marketing. I didn't have any idea what to do. Like we were, we were a little bit past a million in ARR like that. It's just, we have no clue what we're doing. So that helps because I could connect with other VPs or CMOs that had scaled companies and could tell me pitfalls. Or when the outbound BDR team moved under marketing, I used my community to introduce me to 10 BDR leaders that helped me understand um, how to manage a BDR team and grow a BDR team. So it, I, think, I think it's knowledge sharing that's probably the biggest thing. And a lot of times people don't know where to go. I mean, you could... You could do one-off outreach to a bunch of people, but if you have a community, like a network, like a like a actual like Peak or Pavilion or Rev Genius or whatever, you have the ability to go there and say, "Hey, like uh, I need help if, with this," and you'll have a bunch of people as long as it's an engaged community help you out. Yep, that's probably yeah. the biggest thing. I agree with you for sure. And so, I mean, a great example as well is like, you know, Scott Lee, for example, when, when I was, um, you know, I've been in startups and high growth for a little while. And like, when it always comes down to the equity piece, like I never knew how to, to basically like negotiate that piece. And I listened to like the Scott Lee's and like Richard Harris kind of, um, recording. And it was like, it was so like, just being able to have like something like that, where it's like, Hey, if you need yeah. like a subject on this or something on this, here's a bunch of things that you can kind of read. It, it helped me. I mean, I literally used tips from that to basically negotiate like what I wanted for both, you know, short term and long term. Um, and it was really, really helpful for sure. So definitely with you there. Um, I wanted to kind of get into, you know, personal projects. So like, you know, podcast, newsletter, LinkedIn post, whatever you're doing to build your own brand. Do you think that that can play or how do you think it plays into the acceleration in someone's career? Well, I think we've touched on the knowledge sharing. Like if you don't have a community that's giving you feedback on what on pitfalls, like you're missing the point. There's a reason why people read books about what people have done in the past. And there's a reason why I still read books about what people have done in the past. So you can learn um, outside of that. It gives you it gives you a, a greater sense of the of what's available or what's possible in the greater market, right? Because you have more people that know who you are, or understand why you work or any of that stuff, right? Um, it, it, and as long as, as long as you feel like you're moving forward, I think that's the most important thing. If you start feeling like you're stuck or you need to move, like you probably do. If you've spent enough time in, in, uh, in your craft, you, you, your gut's usually right. So I, you know, I, I think that there's just, there's so many, there's so many possibilities to have a group of people around you that can help you, um, that, that there's no reason why you shouldn't do it yeah. or at least build on it. Yep. I'm with you there for sure. Um, so, you know, being a marketing leader, I'm always interested in this question because I, one, like you said, community, how do you learn? Who are two to three people that you learn from to be a better leader every single day? Oh man. Well, I, I, uh, so Max Yoder and Connor Burt, CEO and, and president of Lesson Lee is probably number one. I talk to them almost on a daily basis. Um, their, their ability to scale a company with empathy is unmatched in my opinion. Um, Scott Dorsey, who is CEO of exact target, uh, is on the Lesson Lee board. Uh, if I ever have a career blip, he's the first person that I reach out to. 
He was the first person that I reached out to when my agency was failing when I was very young, right out of college. And he took the time to invest in me and pretty much every career decision I've made since 2009 has been because of Scott. And uh, the third one, you know, I, I have, uh, there's a lot of people that are part of Pavilion, which I'm a huge, like I spend every day in, um, that support that. So it's, it's hard for me to call out a certain person, but that community as a whole has been massive for me. Yeah, I love that. Definitely agree. I mean, I'm on, I think I've been in there for almost two years. Um, and so, I mean, I've definitely gotten a ton of value from it myself. Um, and it's, you know, from people like yourself, especially as like, you know, being in in ABM market and field market, it is things, you know, that I come across around SEO or things like that, that I want to like learn and better yourself as a market. I mean, what's the end goal? Do I want to become a CMO, a VP of market? You have to understand all these different pieces and leveraging a community like that yeah. and the other marketers that are in there has been invaluable for me. Um, so with you for yeah, sure. I think it's I think it's important to separate the two types. I think you have a I think you need a place where you can go ask tactical questions like you mentioned negotiation, ABM strategy, org build outs. What would you do with this issue? And then there's the other side of it, which is more personal and leadership development, right? Where Max, Connor, Scott have been very influential, Daniel and Candela who's CMO at Terminus, who I work for at Exact Target, has been hugely inf inf influential. And a lot of those come through the day-to-day -day contact that you have, not necessarily the online community. But I think you need both in order to truly grow. And there's not a better time than, than now. I sound like a freaking preacher, but <laughs> there's not a better time than now to do that because there's these there's these rich communities that have that have grown stronger out of the out of the pandemic. Yep. And you know they're there for you, and and some of them are free, some of them are paid, but you have no, there's no reason why you shouldn't be involved. Exactly. I mean, especially if your company invests in professional development, I mean, that's that's the way that I've always kind of leveraged it. It's like you know using this professional development stipend or whatever to invest into these these paid yeah. communities for sure. Um, awesome. So, you know, as you know, a marketing leader, someone that's been doing it for a little while, you know, you're scrolling LinkedIn, you're checking out things. How can someone stand out to you from what they create from like your POV? Um, I don't know. It's got, it's such a hard question. It's yeah. gotta be genuine. Yeah. But there's no, like, I, I have a hard time with, you know, these uh, build your personal brand on LinkedIn and here's the playbook. Yep. I just think it's a bunch of bullshit. I just, I, you, you if you define if you apply a process to something it's not going to feel as genuine yeah. now I, I understand that some people need to start there and that's fine uh, i you know you and i both grew up in the well you i think you're a lot younger than i am but i grew up in the aol and messenger <laughs> yahoo messenger yeah. phase where this stuff comes very naturally to me because i've been doing it since i was seven right <laughs> so uh, I can understand for people who it's not natural to build a process, but for me, it's 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 seeing something that's genuine that kind of gets my attention or a an idea that I hadn't thought about. Yeah, totally, totally agree with you there. Um, so I know we're coming up on time, so I just wanted to ask you a few final questions. Uh, you know, when you do post on social is, you know, what's the source of your inspiration for your content? Do you keep notes anywhere? Where are your ideas stored? Like, do you have a specific workflow at all? No. <laughs> I, I honestly, I, I this is not this helpful is not at all for people who are listening. I don't have any workflow. It's pretty much whenever something pops into my head, I post it. Yeah. And I just have been doing it long enough that it comes a little bit more naturally to me. It's hey, I, I agree with you. That that's my personal like preference as well. And it's funny, I was talking to Gatano Denari uh, a couple weeks ago, and he's he's the exact way. He's like when I same same with Scott Lisa. You know, so many people schedule stuff and like has to be very rigid. But like I don't know, I feel like when it comes to your head and you just kind of think of something, I feel like that's when you can be the most authentic in what you want to. Yeah, talk but about. you gotta. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to cut out the uh, the. Uh, 
the other side of the personality spectrum here, because you just mentioned we're all very high D. <laughs> we're all very type A. Katano, Scott, myself, you. So, you know, the people who are a little bit more calculating, if the posts are genuine and they have to schedule it because it may, it's it's how they do work, I'm more like great. But if you if you have to if you have to force yourself to do something, um, and you've been forcing yourself for a specific time period, like let's just call out 90 days, then you probably should try something else. Yeah. It's just not. I know people who are massive medium contributors, or they write huge blog posts, and I I will never be that person. Yeah. Um, so you just got to choose. You just got to figure out what's best for you and make sure you're having fun. Yep. Totally agree. Um, all right. So last question for you. So for the marketer who's never posted a single thing on LinkedIn before, because I get this, a lot of people, especially fresh out of college or something, they're saying, what do I talk about? What do you suggest they post about for that very first time? Post about something that's happening to you. Like, did you, did you solve a demand gen problem? Did you have a good conversation with a manager? Did you have a cool interaction with a teammate? Did you, uh, did you learn something in between your uh, commute home while or sitting at home, depending on your pandemic status? Um, like that, that's what you should post. That's what you should always post. Yeah. Like if you get inspired by an email, post about it. Every, other people want to hear about it. Um, and just continue doing it. And eventually you're going to start seeing that you don't need, you don't need viral posts. You need a community that's engaged. And I don't care if you get 20 likes or 2000, as long as people are engaged with what you're doing. Yep. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Kyle, you know, where can people go to learn more about you, connect with you? Um, anything you want to plug here, feel free. I mean, you can go to LinkedIn or Twitter. That's usually where I spend my most time. You can email me at kylelacy at gmail.com. Um, Leslie.com is still there. Seismic.com is still there. Uh, you know, that's any place you can find me. If you can't find me, then we've got we've got other things to talk about, other issues. Uh, absolutely. Well, Kyle, thanks again. I really appreciate you spending some time with us today. It was fantastic talking with you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.